course we will look into it. Yes, I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hot a rose gold wedding ring and matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. Another body and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. Exactly, you can get that book of riddles shoved up your ass. Is that what your old man paid college for? <laughs> You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Paul, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's ground keeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. How can I help you boys? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. You feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Mark here. Maker's Mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. And you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? Not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. You know the way. We can drive. Fine. Where are we headed? We have a problem. We could have the local trooper check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The perp is having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned the brains. How do you figure that? Percy Bysh Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. The Dahlia letters are genuine. The man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Dear Drummond. And how do we prove that, though? No. Skipper ain't gonna like this one. 
We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. You boys ready? Follow me. We should keep this development with the rings under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. You got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age. Lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing. At least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. The smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. The autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Another missing ring. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. Good morning, ladies. to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. Shit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Hey, can you give me a hand? I got a hard case I need to break. Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. Classic Carmine. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! Don't hit him. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look.
Did you take any money? Wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick in her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Clyde, you get this sack of shit into a cell, I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Cole Phelps, batch 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. survive this, it's going to be a miracle. You read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. Those people are... You drive. I need to go over the case notes. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? I guess that's okay, then. Armies can't fight without food. You can spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Just watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers? What is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Did you see Evelyn last night? No, I was at home, writing. Do you want to get dragged into this, McCaffrey? Do you want us to get interested in you? She hung out with this powder puff, James Tiernan. They haunted the public library together. How well do you know James Tiernan? I know he works some kind of plebeian job at Rawlings Bowling Alley. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of 9th and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. 
How about murder, McCaffrey? You ever been involved in a murder before? If I'm carrying the mark of Cain, you're going to need something to prove it, detective. You're ruining my drink. It's time to move on. McCaffrey, we're not finished with you. You had your chance to cooperate. Can you drive to this one? What did you make of McCaffrey? There'll come a day, and it's coming very soon. We'll run him and the rest of his pinko buddies out of Los Angeles. Man, there's a suspect. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Feltz. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? Ah, uh, this is business, Florence. You got a guy who works here by the name of Tiernan? Sure we do. He's a pin setter. Clears the jams, works the gutters. Go right in. He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. He's a nice boy. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. I brought his socks in. Tiernan! LAPD! What are you waiting for? Get after him! We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel beautiful. Another runner. At least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. Well, your theories are not airtight by any means. Belt, you gotta get me closer! Hit it! Clean this asshole off the road! Keep it steady and I'll try to bust his tire! He's going through the square! I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. This isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless and dangerous. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. Hit him, Cole! That is the end of that! It's about fucking time! Put your hands in the air!
can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Got some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. She wasn't always such a loner. Evelyn was reading Aristotle? Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? How many people will be sad she's gone? I'll be one of the few. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her stay here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. We are struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. What have we got to lose? Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11K, Car 11 King, KGPL. 11 King. A message from Captain Donnelly, return to Central, go to. 11 King, in route. Let's not keep the man waiting. It's me in a certain character now. You got a little bit of the cigarette. Avenue, stand.
You can drive. Uh, he just kept on a raisin and a Captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Hey, you think those vice boys get on the side? Isn't that the cop who won a medal and is solving all the cases? The coroner says it's going to take at least a week to get an idea. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. <laughs> they weren't even a strength and he still confessed. I don't want to make homicides. You know, you've got it made if you can get to that bad. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How could I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6. 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thank you. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn man. Is anybody making coffee soon? This guy must have escaped the loony bin. You're behind the wheel. And where exactly are we going? Let me pose a question. Ken, what's got to do with it? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slam ever found out. McCaffrey is in apartment six. 
Doesn't look like anybody's home. According from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. See, Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you gonna give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can write him up for that. A citation, at least. The cop from the newspaper. suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's gotta be the cap. Unless Tyrannin set him up. I don't think that asshole Jameson did. Now whoever did it was that value. How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do we have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together in a later date. I'll hold you to that. You 
sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan is a one, McCaffrey is in two. I want a confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. Mouthpiece tore strips off me at the grand jury. Case got thrown out. Now the DA wants my head. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? How come this is so hard to believe? A man and a woman getting along, liking each other, just as friends. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it. She wanted something of his. You need me to sign some papers or something? You don't like McCaffrey, do you, Tiernan? <sighs> He's full of the common man routine, but he props up a bar like the rest of us. Evelyn thought he was going to be a great novelist. <laughs> and he had nothing but vitriol for her. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night, and she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! What the hell is the LAPD up to these days? She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the liquor store owner. You're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. But she would never stop talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. The coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. Uh, a big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. Is anybody making coffee for you? Yeah, I want to make homicide. You know, you've got it made if you can get to that desk. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touché, detective. Let's see where this takes us. You told us you barely knew Evelyn Summers. She hung around sometimes. I had very little to do with her. Doesn't look good, Grover. It's either you or Tiernan from where we're sitting. Personally, I think Evelyn is better off, but I had nothing to do with it. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? How about half of a 
Augusta Summers' last correspondence with her daughter. What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. It's either going to be you or Tiernan, Grosvenor. Make it stick, detective. The party has good lawyers. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. Operator, give me dispatch. Putting you through now. Phelps, batch 1247. How can I help, detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thanks for your help. Is that that? You see the cop they've been talking about on the radio? Want another accommodation? I could get the suburbs swanning around in nose. Straight through the red light. Said she never saw it. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go, it's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. So Evelyn passed out and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning and he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box and he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn and that it was all over the radio and that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. It wasn't me. Wait here.
I gave his wife a task. I said, all fair enough. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw, it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman here to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet. I could have fought for this country. I could have... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her! Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady and never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot, Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot in the prison graveyard. Lost most of Shaughnessy and Dunn's squad. His gunny is dead, first platoon is in worse shape. That medic is either crazy or the bravest man alive. Now we rally with the first, the try for the Nambus. It's sheared to the left. To the right, it goes right through a pass with two Nambus and infillate. Mate, we can I'm lose everyone. Shit, Lieutenant. Get back off this fucking bridge. They'll start walking the mortars back to their own positions. We only have I'm minutes. I'm in charge here, Sergeant. Get your men off the bridge, Lieutenant. What's your unit, Sergeant? We don't have time for this, Lieutenant. What's your unit, Sergeant? I company 22nd Marines, Lieutenant. And we just saved your ass by 40 the river. My orders are to reconnoiter the... I think that point is now moot. You have ten men left. My orders are to save what's left. Move out! <laughs> 